Hello everyone, I'm um, just going to give you a quick walk around of my, my new four-wheeler, my new toy I guess you would call it. Um, it's a 2019 Polaris uh, 850 Sportsman, but it's the, it's the high lifter edition, so these tires, um, 29 and a half Outlaw 2s, um, they actually come stock on this vehicle. Um, I've ridden it one time at a place called Riverneck Acres, which is uh, kind of near Florence, South Carolina. Um, and you know we're out there for probably I don't know five or six hours and I had no issues with it uh, the very first hole I hit I pretty much sunk it up to the seat and that was a battle to get out I was trying to rock it back and forth while I was just floating kind of you know just going back and forth so I had to get off and kind of grab the vaccine kind of let it float itself out I'll try and put that in. put that video in here so you can see that um but yeah i mean so far no complaints um i really enjoy it. it's got a lot of power you know definitely get the front wheels to come off the ground um it's got the you know upgraded gears you know upgraded suspension it's got independent rear suspension in the back i'll show you that real fast um let's see so it's got the independent rear suspension you know, CV axles all around. Uh, one thing I did think was kind of funny was the the exhaust here. Kind of to me look, resembles like cow udders, like the way the two little tubes come out of the back. Um, but I mean, it sounds good. I'll start it up for you also, so you can hear it. But I guess a lot of this heat shield that you see in here, they put that in for this new edition because there aren't problems with the old ones burning. Um, and then right in the back here, you have a, a nice little trunk space. See, so it's, it's supposed to be watertight. Like I said, I mean, I had it sunk, and that's just a tow rope, a new tow rope. I haven't had to use it yet, but it's supposed to be like kind of a watertight little air box there. It's pretty hard to open and close, so it's got a tight seal on it. Um, come stock with the radiator relocator kit and the snorkel kit, which is under this front compartment here. I'll take this off real fast to show you what that looks like. Um, it's got these tabs right here. You flip these tabs up. And then you, sorry, I'm walking around the mud here. Flip the tabs up, and then this whole piece here lifts off as so. Okay, I'll set this over here real fast. So the whole, that whole piece right there kind of comes off. And then underneath you have this. So you got your radiator relocated. Oh, my shadow's in the way. You have your radiator relocated, and you got your two dual fans up for cooling. I mean, and these things like, with this right here in the side, as you can see, I'm gonna take this up, set it on here. You kind of have these vents here. I guess it's like for cleaning and stuff and just to get some more airflow. And when those fans back there cut on, if you put your hand here like that, I mean, you can, it's a lot of wind in there. And when it starts overheating, those fans probably cut on for 10 or 15 seconds. You just hear them go full blast. And I mean, they turn off, like I said, after 10 or 15 seconds, they pretty much cool right down. Um, under here, you have your fuse box. Here you have your snorkels. And like I said, it comes stock with all of this. One thing I do not like, and I guess what I've heard from other people is here, you can actually see the snorkel going back um, under here. So you got, you see your snorkel coming in. And they, they've only have like these, you know, these pipe clips on them, these clamps that clip over. I mean, obviously, you know, maybe I'll look in the future towards getting like an actual sealer on there. Um, Cause you hear a lot of people say that and there where the belt is, I don't know how good you can see that or not see that, but there you go under that big case right there is where the belt is and the seal around that i guess leaks for some people also so a lot of people say that it's important to try to reseal that as well um but you know other than that i mean like i said i've no, I had it pretty much underwater you know the water is pretty much covering up the back end of my seat i've had no issues with it at all um you can see they kind of have the the cases on them it's kind of like a rubber pliable material and with that piece on it kind of covers them up because you don't want anything getting in there obviously when you're going through the mud um, obviously, you know, this is where you put your fuel in. Um, I'll sit on it real quick. Show you. The other thing that's pretty cool about it is, you know, for the key, in order to start it up, you actually turn it on like a key, you know, like a car key, right? So normally it's push button start with this one, you actually crank it over like a car ignition. Um, here you have your dash. It says 120, you know, so I don't know what that means, but I mean, it tops out at 50. Like when it's coming up, like the governor, when it's in high, it just tops out 50, which is, 
not very fun because it gets there very quickly. So you're, you know, you're accelerating super fast and you're going and you're like, yeah, this is awesome. And all next thing you know, now you're already governed out. So, you know, that's kind of lame. But over here you have your headlights. And I do not believe there is a high beam for this. So that's kind of weird also. You know, you have your engine run on. And this is your, how you toggle through your gauges. So I'll show you. So that's like the gauge to show you, um, you know, when you have to go on for service, that's your miles. Then you have trip one, trip two, RPMs. You have the hours that you've driven it. So that's pretty much it. And one thing I did notice about this is it also does not have a temperature gauge. I mean, it has an indication on the dash. You can't see because it's not lit up, thankfully. But that is for, you know, when it overheats and you got your neutral. Um, and I guess you can set them up for turn signals because there's a little turn signal icon in there too, I believe, which I do not have turn signals. Over here is your on-demand all-wheel drive. You know, obviously you stop accelerating, you let off the gas, then you can flip that and it's all-wheel drive. Here's your throttle. Um, one cool thing is if you see that, it says like speedo or like reverse override. So it's only gonna go, you know, up to like 10 miles an hour in reverse, but if you hold this down as you reverse, it will actually go just as fast in reverse as, you know, going forward when you're in gear. I think that's really only recommended for you if you're trying to get out of a mud hole and you need more RPM to get the tire spinning more. Um, another cool thing of this feature is the gear shifter here. So all the way back to park, one up to neutral, one up to reverse, one up to low, and then all the way up to high. Um, for putting around trails and stuff like that, you pretty much always want to stay in low. You don't ever really want to go into high unless you're on like a really long stretch or someone's trying to race you and you got a proof point. Um, but I kind of like this gear shifter. It's a little bit hard to, you know, get the hang of at first. You know, it's kind of like when you, I've seen people like if they're trying to shift it ah, and they're really going up, you just have to apply steady pressure and it will go. So I think that's kind of cool, you know, like a car. Um, it is really dirty right now. I'm gonna turn this back off. I'm not gonna start yet. It is really dirty. I just cleaned it. Then we have family in town, and you know I knew that they wanted to ride it, so we took it out. I did spray off underneath, but, you know my plastics because it is black. My plastics are dirty, and I just cleaned it a second ago. So I, I mean, you know, the day before, so I don't want to redo the whole thing. So I know I'm probably gonna go ride later today, anyways. Um, but yeah, I mean this is it. One of the reasons I like this so much is it just looks super aggressive. Like I've heard people say, like. You know, Batman had a four wheeler, he would drive this one, and I cannot agree. It just looks super nice. I'll show you a nice angle from the front. But when you just see that beast coming, it's really nice. Um, I haven't even went in for my first service yet. I think up to 25 hours, you're supposed to go in and get a service first. Another cool thing is, you can see actually right through this grill, that's actually my battery in there. I'll show you from the side. See, so that's my battery sitting right there. You can see then my fluids. It's got the suspension. Uh, it's got a nice suspension in the front too. One thing you do notice is the travel on this suspension isn't that far. So, you know, you only have a little bit of room there before it bottoms out. So I've seen people also upgrade the suspension, but I mean, it's brand new. Like, like you guys saw, I only got four miles on it. So I'm not, we're not gonna upgrade or fix. Hopefully I have to repair anything for a while. I mean, I don't drive too ridiculous, so I'm not anticipating you know, having to do any major services or anything. Like, I'm more for trail or mud. I don't really like, you know, doing water wheelies and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people find that those things very appealing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the video and then I'm gonna go put, you know, my cover back on the front. Like I said, it's not gonna be anything crazy. I don't have anyone filming. I'm gonna kind of have to hold the phone kind of weird in my hand and drive it. You know, there's a little bit of mud here. There's some water right there. So maybe I'll try and go through some of that and show you guys. Um, but other than that, it was just, you know, kind of to say hey i got this and i got some more videos coming for you guys in the future when i went to riverneck like i said earlier my i got all the way there and my gopro was dead i thought it was charging the night before but it was not so but yeah i mean this is it um like i said no trouble so far and uh i definitely really really like it i've been really enjoying it so thank you guys for tuning in like i said i'll get a little short video of me driving because it's kind of lame to not drive it at all but i'll start it up for you guys real fast also um Another cool thing that I did notice <clears throat> when I read the manual, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but the way it reads it actually says when you apply the, the handbrake, it, it applies all four brakes because there is dual disc brakes in the back. I have a brake on both sides, which is pretty cool. A lot of them don't have that. <clears throat> and then the foot, the foot brake over on this side, the foot brake down here, this only does the rear brakes. But pretty much to start it up, you know, you can be in whatever gear I'm in neutral right now. But you apply the brake. And then, like I said, you just turn the key like a car. It's not loud or anything. You know, I don't know if I'm putting it on the side. But, uh, yeah, so that's it. I'll see how these tail lights. So that's one on the back. I'll turn on the headlights real fast for you. Okay, the headlights in the front. But, all right, like I said, I'll make a short video.
Thanks for watching. You guys all have a blessed day. Thank you very much.